Hello people, I would like to talk to you about the Vicoustic VigBooth Ultra 1x1 with integrated shelf and optional ventilation unit. Uh, I work for a children's books company. The past four years I have recorded about 200 uh, voiceovers for uh, picture books. So uh, we make uh, audiobooks for picture books and um, until now I didn't have uh, a voice booth like this. I just recorded it in the open space, in the open recording space here in my studio. Um, but I have some issues with street noise. Uh, the first two years it was reason reasonably okay, but uh, it's, it has gotten worse. So, uh, and this year we are going to record four times as much um, stories. So I needed to look for a solution to uh, professionalize the, the workflow and to have um, a recording environment for voiceover that is free of street noise or random noises like motorcycles, buses passing, people laughing, all that kinds of stuff. I use it for um, voiceover recordings, uh, but maybe you will use it for other things. Uh, but I hope this video will inspire you and help you to find solutions that are usable for you. There are some other videos on uh, YouTube, actually only two. Uh, I will link to those in the description. Ficoustic has made some promotional videos, but actually they don't have any practical and informational um, videos not really in depth anyway. They have some, but it all boils down to promotional uh, videos. So I don't think they have done a really good job uh, in providing good information. And uh, like, they, I think they should make a good documentary or a, like something in depth. How do they, the pieces fit together? How big is the window? How high is the window? How can you place microphone arms? What are the different kinds of solutions you could try? They have provided zero information about this. So um, that's why I'm making this video, hoping some other people who would like to buy this uh, get some extra information like this um, with some help of your audio friends. So um, let's dive into it. Let's see what the Vicoustic VigBooth Ultra 1x1 with shelf and ventilation unit has to offer and how you can use it for your purposes and what kinds of uh, practical ideas you could um, implement. First, the construction of the booth is really uh, very strong. It weighs 200 kilos. The wood panels are made of uh, MDF, so it's really good density to block sound. So the handle of the door is, um, I think, steel or some kind of iron, I don't know, metal. <laughs> uh, really nicely um, uh, touched here with the logo. So let me first show you the outside, the connections. Uh, of the door are really strong, of course. It, everything is really good quality. Uh, I will try to show you as best as I can with this lens. I will go a little bit further. So this is my studio. You see how uh, the booth doesn't take too much space. So there's a street. I have some street noise issues. As I said earlier, that's the reason why I ordered this booth. Here is the screen. The screen on which the voiceover talents can read the text of the books. I will show you in a minute 
how that is from the inside. So let's go inside. You are wondering probably what are those white panels on top of the regular acoustic panels. So I ordered these extra um, acoustic panels. And those white things, they uh, were just inside of the packaging of these panels. And they are made of a really dense, some sort of uh, absorbing acoustic uh, material. And I uh, tested the difference. Um, so my microphone is pretty high and the uh, black panels are a little bit too low to prevent reflections from the walls going inside the microphone. Uh, and these white panels, they improve the acoustics uh, somewhat. It's still not perfect. Um, in general, if you expect a perfect acoustic uh, recording in this booth, uh, that will not be possible. It's just too small, even with good ac acoustic absorbing materials. Uh, you, I think you really need to know how to do a subtractive equalizing and how to treat a voiceover recording in a good way. Uh, but end results can be very, very professional, but you need to know how to um, work on the sound in post-production. So um, I will show you or let you hear some examples later on. I bought some RGB LED snake I connected it with uh, these plastic clamps that are self-adhesive. I used some uh, steel wire to connect it to the screw. And then it goes like this without support. Another uh, steel wire connected to the other screw in the roof panel and then it goes down again with these plastic clamps again like this. I connected the microphone to a Rode PS1. Let me show you how the position is because it took me some time to see, to find out how I should position it. Uh, first I thought the space here was too small, but uh, eventually it worked. Let me show you how it is connected here. So here you have the uh, supporting um, brackets for the shelf. I put a small metal plate here to compensate for the difference in height so that the metal ring here does not go uh, sideways and so you have a good support. It's just um, just enough space. I would like to push it some more to the back, but the brackets are too thick. So I would like to see an improvement that Vicoustic makes um, an opening in these brackets. So you could position the microphone boom arm further away, or maybe some thinner brackets. I don't know, or maybe a triangular shape with a large opening something like that to facilitate the boom arm. It was really important for me and I didn't find any information about this, how other people uh, put their microphones in this booth. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, where do you put it? Uh, what, what kinds of uh, stands or arms can you use? 
all these things, all these details, there's no information about it. Really strange that Vicoustic does not provide some tips or um, things like that to show future users uh, what kinds of things that they could install and in what way. I also tried a regular microphone stand and put it here, but uh, that was not really elegant and it was um, taking up too much space uh, and it felt too chaotic. So um, I, I would suggest uh, using something like this. There are some other brands who make these, uh, but the Rode is really tried and tested. Um, Elgato has a really good boom arm I have seen, so maybe that would be a good option as well. Um, and then you see the screen, like you saw earlier, the screen is outside of the booth. Uh, so you could place something here. There is a gap in the shelf where you could place uh, like something like an iPad, but I think it's too low. So you would really have to look down when you are reading. And I think that's really strange. So I don't know why anyone would think that's a good idea. I think you should be uh, looking straight forward and reading from a screen at eye height or approximately eye height. So I have installed the screen outside with a, uh, this um, moving arm so I can even move the screen up and down or tilt it or whatever I want or bring it more to the front. So that's really flexible. <clears throat> uh, on the shelf there is space for uh, like a keyboard. I have a wireless keyboard here and a wireless mouse. Uh, of course, when there's a voiceover talent coming here, they don't use that. They just use the headphones. Um, I use the keyboard and mouse when I am recording my own voice so I can control my computer. So uh, the Windows computer is standing there. All my wires are going around the room and in the voice booth. I will show you in a minute where they go inside the voice booth. And this wireless um, keyboard and mouse is connected to my PC, so I can do everything from here if I want. The headphones. So I use the DT770 Pro from uh, Biodynamic. Uh, it's a really good mic, uh, really good headphones. Uh, it isolates really well and it's really comfortable to work all day. Uh, that's not the case with all headphones. Uh, for headphone amp, I use the Superlux HA3D. Um, it's not an expensive uh, headphone amp, but I really like the quality and build. It's really very sturdy. It's uh, made of metal. Um, it has three channels. It has a XLR input or a stereo jack input and uh, volume knobs for the voiceover talent to um, adjust the volume as needed. So that's really nice. I connected it with uh, Velcro. So as you can see, uh, you don't see it maybe, yes. So it just, uh, with um, Velcro uh, things for um, pedal boards for guitarists, I use that to connect it and to be able to um, take it away if I need to. On the floor, I put some uh, moving blanket just to protect the the floor. I think. Uh, after using it one, two or five years, the floor will really uh, have, um, uh, will have been damaged just by people standing here. 
so I would like to uh, protect it and that's why I put this on the ground. It's more expensive to replace the floor panel than to buy a small cloth or a, a rug or something. I put power supply here. I don't need much, of course, just for the headphone amp. Uh, but there's also a possibility for USB, for voiceover talents to charge their phones or something. Or to, to put an iPad there. So here we have uh, where the cables come in, inside. So you can open this, it's a small plastic lid. Let me try to open it. There's too much cables here, so <laughs> I need to fidget. Yes, like this. So there's um, here's a acoustic material. I will show you a better photo. So here on the photo you can see um, how the wires come inside. It's really easy to uh, put them through the hole. Here you have at the bottom like uh, an, inc an incision, or how, how do you call it in English, uh, where the cables can come inside and go up through the acoustic isolation um, and go inside the booth like that. You could also put some extra um, acoustic material inside the hole just to make sure there's no sound coming from outside. Um, and here on the floor you have these uh, uh, holes. Uh, these holes are for the air supply. Um, you have the same holes at the top in the roof through which the air is pushed uh, um, by means of the ventilation unit. Uh, the ventilation unit is on the other side at the top of the roof. Inside of the roof there are some um, channels or how do you say it in English? Like It goes like that. I will show you on the uh, pictures here. And that's how the noise is um, attenuated. So, but as you will hear later, uh, the noise of the ventilation unit is pretty substantial. Um, but it's workable. Because it's a constant noise, you can really easily remove it. Uh, with something like Isotope uh, RX, uh, spectral noise remover. So, um, yeah, it's better than random noises like motorcycles or buses passing in the street. So, uh, I tried to use the booth also without a ventilation unit, but I would strongly, very strongly recommend to buy the ventilation unit with the booth because it really gets very um, uh, deprived of oxygen after a few minutes. So I don't recommend using the booth without a ventilation unit. I think in the future when we move to another building I will um, improve the connection of the ventilation unit because now it's connected to the uh, on the top of the roof and I think the most noise is coming from contact sound, like the vibrations of the ventilation unit uh, are being amplified by the booth itself, by the wood and the construction. And I think if you could um, make some extra layers or some or make some more distance between the ventilation and the booth, you could uh, improve the noise coming from the ventilation unit. Let me show you here the door handle from inside. 
So I can go inside and pull the door and close it. So now we are inside. It's really quiet. I will make some recordings for you to compare uh, noise levels. So now the ventilation unit is, of course, not active. Um, let me go outside again, just push. The door closes with these rubbers. Uh, these rubbers are really similar to those of a refrigerator. Um, they do their job really well. Uh, the door is closed by magnets. I, I'm not sure where the magnets are placed. I think they are inside this wood frame or something. They have done a really w uh, good job designing this. The booth is really well constructed. The bolts are really strong. Everything is really easily um, constructed. I mean, it's really easy to assemble, uh, but you really, really need to be with two persons at least. So especially when you are um, carrying the boxes, you cannot do this on your own. But also holding the panels while someone else um, connects the panels. I put a ladder here. Let's go look on top of the roof. I'm going to try not to fall. So I hope I can take some distance to show you. Yeah, I put some decorative uh, masks on top of it. So there's a lot of space here. But here is the ventilation unit. It costs uh, 300 euros, $300, I think. Um, it's really well built. The, the wood frame is from the same uh, build quality as the rest of the booth. Uh, it's really easily connected with some screws here. Um, I cannot say anything about the quality of the ventilation itself. I mean the, the motors that are used. I don't know anything about that. They seem okay. I would suggest to Vicoustic to um, make a, a, to redesign the ventilation unit, maybe uh, make one big fan instead of two small ones. I think that will generate um, less noise because you need less uh, turns per minute for the ventilation to make the same amount of air move. So I would rather have seen one big uh, fan instead of two small ones. Um, I don't know, maybe they tried it and maybe it turned out even worse. I mean, it's not bad, but it generates a really audible noise. So, but as I said earlier, you can easily remove it with uh, noise removal tools like uh, Isotope RX spectral uh, noise remover. So I can live with that. It's uh, much better than random street noise. And you really need the fresh air. So you don't have a choice in my opinion. Make sure when you, um, when you start building this that you think in advance about where you want to place it. Um, I had the luck that um, my floor here is really uh, smooth. So pushing the booth uh, was really easy with two persons, with two people. So yeah, just make sure if you have a carpet or something like that, uh, it will not be able, uh, it will not be possible to push it. So you need to build it on the spot where you want to leave it. So, uh, and like you can, uh, as you can see, these screws, 
they uh, need some space to be able to put them inside. So if you have a, a wall and you want to place it next to the wall, that will not be possible if you are not able to move the booth afterwards uh, by pushing it. So beware of that. Really think it through in advance uh, where you want to place it and how you would be able to push it if needed. So this is the floor panel. Inside it looks like this. This is the ventilation shaft. Screws and bolts. The booth arrived with a large truck. The booth weighs 200 kilograms. It came in very large uh, cardboard boxes. The packaging was really well done, except for one thing, I think I just had bad luck. The roof isolation panel was damaged. It came out of the box looking like this. Um, the box itself was not damaged, so I assume that the damage was done before packaging. I don't know how that happened and how it is possible that they didn't see it, but we managed to glue it back together and the damage does not affect the sound isolation or anything like that. I did contact uh, Toman, the uh, provider, I mean, the where I bought this uh, unit. So I hope they can send a replacement so I can replace the roof panel so it looks uh, perfect. The cardboard boxes were really heavy, so you need to be with at least two people to carry these. Unloading the truck, we were with five people and that really went very smooth. So really plan this um, delivery in advance. Think about it, how you are going to do it. Uh, we spent, I think, four or five hours um, building this thing. Of course, we did not only build this, we also connected the screen to the wall and some other details around the booth in the studio. Uh, and we lost some time with gluing the panel, the roof panel. So in normal circumstances, you should be able to build it in four hours. Make sure you have the right equipment with you and that you have everything you need uh, and more because sometimes there are some unforeseen circumstances. One important tip I can give you as well is these plastic brackets on which the acoustic panels rest. They are of really bad quality. That's the only thing I can say about the booth that is really bad. I think they urgently need to redesign these uh, brackets and choose a more sturdy plastic or aluminum uh, brackets or something like that. One of uh, the brackets I used uh, broke, split in two. One of the acoustic panels fell down on one of these brackets. I noticed that you shouldn't screw the plastic bracket all the way to the end. You should leave some room for the plastic bracket to move so that there is no tension on the plastic. The space keeper for the bracket is too small. So the bracket goes a little bit sideways and when you screw it too tightly, there will be tension on the plastic. And then if something hits it, it just breaks. We managed to repair the bracket with some super glue, reconnected it to the wall, and now it's fine. So there's no um, problem. But it was really strange because they didn't provide spare brackets. All the other parts, like the bolts and screws in the building package, for all these other things, they provided spare parts. In case you lose one, you still have some uh, spare ones. So now let's go listen to some examples. I have recorded some audio inside the booth without the ventilation unit running, with the door open and with the door closed. I have also made some recordings without the ventilation unit active, recording a voiceover 
just to show you how it sounds. This recording is just unprocessed. This is a teeny tiny test to see how it sounds without the ventilation unit on. And this is the same recording with post-production processing to show you what you can achieve in the end. This is a teeny tiny test to see how it sounds without the ventilation unit on. The ventilation unit has three speeds which you can set with a small knob that is connected to the cable. If acoustic recommends putting the ventilation units at maximum speed. That's also my recommendation. I tested it at the other speeds as well. The noise difference is not that big and you really need the airflow uh, that is produced by the maximum speed. And as I said, the difference in noise is not that big that you would want to choose one of the lower speeds. Here is a recording with a ventilation unit at maximum. First you will hear just only the noise of the ventilation unit and then you will hear a voiceover talking. This is another teeny tiny test to see how it sounds, but this time with the ventilation on at maximum speed. And now the same recording with noise reduction. I use isotope spectral denoiser and the results are really clean, I think. This is another teeny tiny test to see how it sounds, but this time with the ventilation on at maximum speed. Here you see my studio before the booth was uh, being installed. Really messy, all my stuff uh, lying around. But then eventually, when the booth was installed, I managed to clean up and now it looks like this. So, my final conclusion about this product, the Vicoustic VigBooth Ultra 1x1 with shelf and ventilation unit. First of all, Price quality ratio is excellent. The build quality is really excellent. The design is really excellent. Um, I think the noise reduction uh, is also very good. One lesser thing is maybe the acoustic quality inside. Uh, there is some comb filtering happening, but if you know how to use an equalizer and use subtractive EQ, you will be able to compensate for that. Apart from that, uh, I think it's really worth its money, but you should absolutely uh, buy the ventilation unit from day one. It's easy to install, but you need to be with two people at least. So yes, I would recommend this product, but make sure you think it through in advance. Where are you going to place it? Uh, where are you going to put your screen if you need one? All these details, you need to think about it in advance. By the way, this video is not sponsored. I just bought this product and I thought there's so little information. Uh, I only found two YouTube videos of users and some promotional videos of Acoustic and not much information besides that. So I thought I want to help some uh, people that are looking to buy this unit or want to compare products. So yeah, I hope you find some use in this uh, video and happy recordings. <laughs>